Welcome to our lecture online. In this video, we're going to talk about the reduced mass of an electron. The reduced mass is what we would call the effective mass of the electron because there's something going on when the electron revolves around the nucleus. The nucleus does not stay put at the very center, but actually moves. In other words, the proton actually makes small little circles around the center of mass of the atom. The electron has a very tiny mass, but it's very far away. The proton has a big mass, but it's close to the center mass. But as the electron goes around the nucleus, the proton, you can see, will make little circles as well. In other words, they will stay on the opposite ends of the center of mass of the, of the atom. And because of that, the mass of the electron is not as effective as it would be if the proton stays at the center and didn't move. So it acts as if the electron is slightly less heavy or slightly less massive than it actually is. And so we have to find that effective or that reduced mass. And therefore, that is the mass that we need to use in all our equations to get a more accurate results for the correlation between the electron jumps and the photons and the energy of the photons being created. The way to do that is to start with the total energy of the system. We have the kinetic energy of the proton and the kinetic energy of the electron, which is defined by 1 half mv squared. We're going to use the large m and large v to signify the proton and the small m and small v to signify the electron. Not that the values are bigger, simply so we can keep them uh, organized. Obviously, the velocity of the electron is much bigger than the velocity of the proton. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use the equation that the momentum is equal to the mass times the velocity. This is what it would be for the proton, and this is what it would be for the electron. We'll use big P and small p to differentiate again. So in this case, we can write this as 1 half P squared divided by M. Notice we only have 1M instead of an M squared, so we have to compensate for that. And plus 1 half little p squared divided by little m. Now, because of the conservation of momentum, we know that the momentum of the proton must equal the momentum of the electron. Otherwise, we can't have the center mass staying at the same location. So what we can say here is that big P must equal little p. And what we're going to do is replace big P by little p and write this as 1 half little p squared divided by m. This is the momentum of the electron plus 1 half p squared divided by little m. At this point, we can factor out a 1 half and a p squared, so this becomes equal to p squared divided by a 2, which, uh, and then here what we have left is 1 over big M plus 1 over little m. And then finally, what we're going to do here is to find the reduced mass, is to write that over a common denominator, so this is equal to p squared divided by 2 times, and this would be, let's see here, that would be little m plus big M over m times big M. There we go. Now we want to write that in terms of something that looks like this again. Because if we assume that the nucleus doesn't move at all, the momentum of this would go to zero, and then we would have all the momentum caused by the electron, so we want to have an expression that, that signifies that. So this can then be written as p squared divided by 2 times m o put mu in, or matter, matter of fact, I don't like the letter mu, how about um, mass reduced, m sub bar, like that. So this is the reduced mass of the electron. So we want the total energy to become equal to a situation as if the electron was the only thing that was moving and the proton was not, and so then we have E total is equal to this. To do that, we now have to realize that 1 over mr equals this. So now we can say that 1 over the reduced mass is equal to what's inside the parentheses, which is equal to little m plus big M over m times uh, big M, like this. So you can see that this is equal to that, and we write that as 1 over the reduced mass. Flipping that over, we have the reduced mass is equal to m times big M over m plus big M, like this. And this is the effective or reduced mass, the mass that the electron seems to have if the nucleus of the atom didn't move at all. And so that's the mass that will give us a much more accurate value for the wavelengths of the transitions of the electrons. Now let's see here, we could actually do a couple of things. First of all, let's say that the two masses were equal. If the mass of the proton was equal to the mass of the electron, 
then this would be equal to, so if m was equal to big M, let's see what would happen. So then the reduced mass, mass reduced, would be equal to m squared divided by 2m, which is equal to m over 2. So in other words, if the two masses of the two objects were exactly the same, the reduced mass would only be half what it normally would be. But of course, in this case, that's not the case. The mass of the electron is much smaller than the mass of the proton, so let's plug in some values. So m sub r is equal to 9.11 times 10 to the 31 kilograms. The mass of the proton is 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27. And then we divide that by 9.11 times 10 to the 31 plus 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27. Let's see what that gives us for the reduced mass of the electron. So um, let's do the denominator, 9.1131. Ooh, that should be minus 31, shouldn't it? Ooh, yeah, that would be a big electron, wouldn't it? All right, <laughs> let's try that again with the proper values. I don't know if I punched the right numbers in or not, so let me try that again. 9.11 e to the 31 minus. Twenty-seven minus equals, and there it is. We get this is equal to nine point one zero five zero three times ten to the minus thirty-one kilograms. So notice it doesn't make a lot of difference; it makes a small difference, but it's significant enough that we should pay attention to it. So, what would be the ratio of the reduced mass m sub r? divided by the real mass of the electron. So in that case, we end up with 9.10503 divided by 9.11. So if we do that, so divide by 9.11 e to the minus equals, we end up with a ratio of 0 0.99945. So notice that the mass reduced is equal to 99.945% of the mass of the electron. So it's not a big change, but it's significant enough that we can actually measure the change in something we need to compensate for to get more accurate results. But that's what we mean by the reduced mass. So instead of using this value for the mass of an electron, we actually should be using this value when we're dealing with transitions of electrons between energy levels and trying to find accurate values for the wavelengths of the photons associated with those jumps. And that's why we need something called the reduced mass.